up tribe how you guys doing go ahead and hit that subscribe button and i hope you like this video well listen we are back with another season of the of the chasing atlanta this is season four episode one so welcome back to the show that is formerly known as chasing atlanta that is now chasing atlanta the musical because the first 20 minutes of this episode were performances and i just expected it to just be a breakout song in every scene because I mean, that's what the whole first... Damn, Oliver Twix just gave us a whole concert break. I mean, he ain't even have a scene with nobody. It was just him and the mic in that studio singing. He gave us a whole Patti LaBelle performance. Um, and Dario, whoever was doing the cinematography, gave us a whole 80s feel video. Like, if y'all know the 80s, y'all know that that was a whole 80s video MTV moment, Okay. Listen, I see you chasing the land. And listen, one thing, the one thing they'll never say that they are short of on chasing Atlanta is music, okay? Because everybody on there is a musician, okay? Um, but let's go on back to the beginning, child. So we start off, we have Rico with the K. Hey, Rico. Um, Miss, um, 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 Miss Gooey herself, Lil Kendra. They are performing, they are um, doing, they, they did this song together, and they're the opening act for, um, who was this, I ain't right, I wrote his name down, hold on y'all, uh, uh, Eli, now Cameron is Eli's manager, now Cameron, listen, I'm gonna go ahead and have to give you a little bit of this, okay, I like you Cameron, I ain't never had no beef with Mr. Cameron, and Cameron is an OG, Cameron go all the way back to season one. But let me just say this, Cameron, you was throwing shade from the word go. The minute we saw you, you started throwing shade. And then by the end of the episode, you was trying to act like you don't understand why people were saying that you were saying that you was doing because you were, okay? Now, you was throwing shade at Troy for you not, nobody being sure what Troy do. But let's be clear, I don't know what you do, sir. Because in the first episode, the first season, you had your all a whole clothing line, okay? Last season, you was a club promoter. Now, this season, you a manager. Now, I'm not saying you ain't hustling, and I ain't saying you ain't making no money. But I'm, what I am going to say is you are in no position to throw shade at nobody else when it comes to the job. That's all I'm going to say about that. Now, they performed, and they did the damn thing. I could definitely see there was some production put into this, some rehearsals. We had choreography. We had whole shit worked out. Lil' Kendra went and stopped by and picked her up a pair of breasts during the off season and they was looking good she had the girls sitting up okay i was here for it okay i was here for it all right now when they got done performing of course they were out back talking you know we gotta have a scene and that is where cameron started throwing shade and what we found out because he gonna ask rico so where your where your friends at rico was like what now one thing we know about rico rico don't really like to do the drama too much he just he really don't that's not his thing so Rico was like, what you talking about? And Cameron was like, I mean, I'm just saying, like, where your friends at? Where your friends at? And Rico was like, listen, oh, you mean like Dominique? Well, Dominique couldn't make it, but he comes to my performances. I ain't tripping. He was like, I'm not that kind of friend that feel like you have to be at everything I'm doing. Like, he's been to performances before. He supports me. I ain't tripping. So then Cameron was like, what about Troy? And Rico was like, well, what's going on? Like, where, 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 where is this shade coming from? So come to find out, when they were in Chicago, if you watch Chase in Dallas, you know about the whole Chicago situation. When they were in Chicago, Troy was being real diva-like, and he was being rude to a neek. Um, and he kind of gave he kind of gave Cameron a little bit too. But Cameron was upset about the fact that Troy was, you know, acting real diva-ish and acting, you know, being a, being a bitch. And he ain't appreciated. Um, and it seemed like they've been distant ever since they've been back from Chicago. Now, we're going to get to the other side of that in a minute. Um, and that was pretty much that, okay? Then, like I said, we had the whole concert break with Oliver, and we found out that Mr. Oliver Twix is doing the things of the things. Um, he's had some ups and he had some downs. Uh, the ups, we know he was on the T.S. Madison um, experience, which has just been renewed for a season. Well, I can say just been renewed, but I think it was just announced that it's been renewed for a season two. So, shout out to Oliver and Miss um, T.S. of the Madison for that. We, um, he told us about his YouTube channel going viral, and again, if you are not following his YouTube channel, he does the interviews, um, with, um, the America's Next Top Model, um, um, girls, um, and he's had some really great video, um, um, interviews, and a lot of those have gone viral, 
Um, even to the point where Tyra Banks reached out to him and they had a whole moment, okay? Um, but some of the lows, some of the lows, uh, him and his boyfriend broke up. Remember last season he was in love, honey? Him and his boyfriend broke up. And he said him and his mama had a falling out. So I'm, I'm curious to find out what happened with that because the two of them seem to be really close. So I hate to see it. I hope that they reconcile, you know, because they seem to really have a good relationship and be, be really close, okay? So that's what's going on with Oliver. We don't see Oliver no more this episode, so we're just going to go ahead and get him out the way, okay? So then we see Cameron meeting up with his friend slash former designer. Um, he made, child, whatever, Jay Moore. Now, listen, Jay Moore is a designer. He's made clothing for Cameron. I guess that's their connection. And Cameron reached out to him because Cameron said he was interested in restarting his fashion line and so jay moore was like listen i can work with you and i can talk to you but time is money money is time so i'm gonna have to charge you if you ain't really serious okay so they get to the clothing store and cameron gets to talking to him and once again cameron is throwing shade he's throwing shade at dominique he's throwing shade at troy and he's talking about that they supposed to be having this networking event and jay was like listen i need to know if this is a real networking event or a fake networking event because this is atlanta and people be playing games and Cameron was like, well, I don't know, girl. You know, I don't know if it's going to be real or if it's going to be fake. You know, they said it's going to be some sort of tequila situation, but you may need to bring your own tequila because I don't know if they're going to have no liquor there. And then he said, you might want to eat before you come too. Jay was like, what kind of... What kind of event are you inviting us to? Like, what is this? So then Cameron going to say, well, you know, um, my boy Ike is going, Voice of Array. If y'all don't... If y'all not familiar with Voice of Array, um... Voice of Array, he was on another show that we won't name. He was also on Wheel of Fortune. But he's coming through. Now, what we come to find out is... Cameron wasn't really even invited to this event. Uh, Ike was invited to the event via his Instagram from Troy. And Cameron is going along as his plus one, but you inviting somebody else as a plus one. I don't understand how you're going to invite somebody as a plus one and use a plus one, and you didn't even get an invitation. Like, you were purposefully not invited. Because you call yourself being friends with all three of the people that's throwing this event, but you didn't get no invitation. And then on top of that, you shading it. Cameron, you being messy. You, you really are. And then at the end of this, I, I know I keep jumping ahead, but then at the end of this episode, you want to act like you don't understand why the child. So then we see Dominique, Rico with the K, and Troy meet up. Now here's where I'm a little confused, Dominique. Now Dominique, you know I rocks with you, right? Dominique is having a runway show by himself. I didn't know if he was modeling the clothes of the dog. Because we know he's a dog groomer. So were you modeling the dog? Were you modeling the clothes? Did you put the dog? I don't know. Either way, it was a it was a moment for them to come together and talk, okay? Um Dominique said he heard that Cameron been shading him, okay? Troy said he heard that Cameron been shading him. Um Rico said, keep me out of it. I don't want to have nothing to do with it. I don't do the drama. Now, Nick boyfriend bought him some flowers. That was cute. Mm -hmm. They still together. He said he's working on his personal training business. I'm here for it, baby. Be a personal trainer. Do you, okay? Uh, but they, you know, of course, they talking about their event and, you know, the fact that who they invited, who they didn't invite. But what I find to be very interesting is they were trying to talk and figure out the situation with Cameron. And best they can recollect is that Cameron is upset with them because of what happened in Chicago. And their thing is, listen, we we had a situation in Chicago. We worked it out. We moved on. We came back home. We hung out a couple of times. Why are you still mad? Why are you still holding on to this? Why are you still dealing with this? Now, I'm going to say this to you, um, Cameron. I'm going to give you some words of wisdom. Now, Cameron, you the OG on this show. But let me tell you this. And you should have learned this lesson a long time ago. I can't be more mad than you are. If Troy disrespected Dominique, and he's over it, then you just got to be over it. By proxy, you just got to be over it. I can't be more mad at him than you are. 
if you were the person offended. And that's what it sounds like happened. You're mad because you feel like Troy was disrespectful to Dominique and he said some things that were inappropriate. And it may have been the worst thing in the world. He may have called that man all kinds of, you know, bitches and hoes and talked about his mama. But if he okay with it, you can't be more mad about it than he is. And clearly he's okay with it because him and Troy are still besties. So, anyway, child. So then we see Lil Kendra and with Wayne, Wayne the Pain. And we find out that Lil Kendra and Wayne, they haven't been as close as they once were. Um, come to find out that um, Lil Kendra's been a little distant. She's had a lot going on. She said her grandmother had a stroke. Her and her best, um, best friend ha had a falling out. One of her friends was murdered. And then her and her boyfriend broke up. That's a lot. So she said that she was actually, she you know, she said she was at a point where she didn't want to live anymore. And she really thought about hurting herself. And Wayne was like, listen, I've been calling you. I come by the house. I've been trying to reach out to you. He said, you know that I got you. You know that you can always talk to me. You can always reach out to me. Like, I don't ever want you to feel like that, friend. And listen, I love their relationship. Wayne, sometimes he getting on my nerves because sometimes I think he be doing too much. But I think the two of them have a really good relationship and a genuine friendship. And I can appreciate Wayne. When you know that she pulling away like that, you do exactly what you did. He said, I would call, she didn't answer. I would go by the house. I knew she was in the house because her car was out there. Baby, I'm here for it. You be that kind of friend. You be that kind of friend. Um, because she does go through a lot. Okay? And it's always hard when you when the relationship ends. It's always hard. So you just you you be there for her. So that was that was cool. And then we she's starting a nonprofit to help um, transgender, to help support transgender um, women um, and try to keep them out of having to do things that they don't want to do just to be able to survive, right? So then we see Cameron in a scene with Ike. Um, I'm sure that was a way to introduce Ike. Hey, Ike. I like Ike. Ike my boo. I remember Ike from the other show, and I like Ike. And basically, they were talking, you know, Cameron was bringing Ike up to speed on his situation and what he had going on with Troy and Dominique. And, you know, basically, we was cool, but we not, and I'm not sure why. And, I'm, you know, we're going to go to this networking event, and, you know, they're they going to probably be shady, but I appreciate you being there for me and, you know, having my back. Now, Ike, I like you, but I don't know if you're being messy, okay? But it seems like him and Cameron been friends for a while or whatever. So we get to the networking event, okay? The networking event is happening, and um, it sounds like Neek's thing was, I put most of this event together, and I left the invitations up to Troy and Rico. And between Troy and Rico, Cameron just did not get an invitation. Now, Neek finally did invite Cameron the day before, and of course, Cameron took it as an afterthought. Like, you invite me the day before the event, but I've been hearing about this event for weeks, which tells me that I was an afterthought. I was never originally on the on the list so we get to the party and we meet some of the other people that are going to be on the show we meet my boy rico cassidy hey boo um and we meet hold on i wrote the name down child drew friday now drew friday is a drag performer um and um they know um her from around town going to the drag shows down to the atlanta so we see you know some new faces this season some new faces so um of course, Cameron walks in the door shade and talking about it ain't a whole lot of people here and it looks like a lot of people did show up and it ain't nobody really there and, you know, he don't speak to people when he come in. So you clearly are acting like you have a problem. Like, you're not acting like you're not mad, right? Um, Rico Castanon was like, I feel the tension. Like, I feel like there's something going on. You know, I see some dude walking around looking like Madonna child. He was talking about Dominique. I said, I'm not doing this with you why you say Dominique look like Madonna like I'm not doing this with you uh -huh. um and then when they greeted their guests you know they they all said a little speech Dominique is shading people talking about well everybody here is an entrepreneur well some more than others or something to that extent I said and Cameron now I'm gonna tell you Cameron had the best line of the night Cameron said, that was disrespectful. You talking about your good Judy like that. And he's sitting right next to you talking about the Troy was the entrepreneur, the sometimes entrepreneur. I said, okay. So, um, 
everybody shows up. Like I said, everybody shows up. And um, my boy, was Janor, listen, I know I'm saying your name wrong, baby. Give me a minute. I'm, I'm, I, give me a minute because I'm, I'm bad with the names. Now, it seems as though Jay Moore, and Jay Moore, I like you. Like I said, work with me, boo, because I was here for that outfit. I was here for the beat. I was here for the shape, okay? I like you. So work with me on the name, baby. Don't get me too bad on the name. But Troy tried it because Troy act like he didn't know this man. Listen, let me tell you something. That is a pet peeve of mine. Don't play with me and don't play in my face. You the man. He said, listen, I am six foot seven. You cannot miss me. You meet me once you know me, okay? And not to be shady and not to act like I am that bitch, but I am that bitch. Like, you know me. Like, don't play games with me, Troy. And I feel like Troy did it. I feel like Troy played. Troy was playing. Talking about some. Oh, well, I know him in passing, but I don't know him. <laughs> Troy, you playing games. But anyway, but he was like, I'm going to give you a pass this time. But he was side-eyeing shit out of Troy. Like, yeah, okay. You get one pass, but you don't get two. Okay? Now, at some point during the night, Cameron pulls Dominique aside. Because Cameron's thing is, I don't have no beef with Dominique, and I don't want Dominique to think that this is personal or that I have beef with him. My beef is with Troy and Troy alone. So he pulls Dominique outside, and Dominique's thing is, if you have beef with Troy and you don't have beef with me, then why are you shading me? Because it got back to me that my name has been in your mouth all over the place. And then he gave the example of the concert and asking where, where was I. And he was like, first of all, Rico already knew I wasn't coming, but I had an opportunity to do Light Skin Keisha's Dog. And when a celebrity calls, somebody that can elevate your game, somebody that can put, you know, that you can add to your resume, you jump. And Rico understands that. And Cameron was like, okay, well, I wasn't talking about you. I was talking about the other one, the other friend. He was like, Troy, Troy works way up the road. Troy worked damn near in Tennessee. So he can't make it to everything. If he has to work, he got to work. But here go my thing. Cameron, you lying. You're lying because you you clearly said your friends with an S, with an S. And when Rico with the K was like, and I have to say Rico with the K because there's two Ricos on the show now. But when Rico with the K was like, oh, well, you know, Dominique, you know, he couldn't make it, but I'm not that kind of friend. I don't trip. You never clarified and said, oh, well, I'm not talking about Dominique. Me and Dominique good. I'm talking about Troy. Because if you was talking about just Troy, then that could have just been the thing out your mouth. Where is Troy? Where is your boy? But you had an S on that. It was plural. You were clearly asking about both of them. So Dominique was perfectly within his feelings or his rights to be in his feelings that you was coming for him and you had some shade. So they end up going back and forth. Now Cameron want to play innocent. I wasn't talking about you, Dominique. I wasn't talking about you. I didn't have no problem with you. It was all on Troy. It was Troy. It was Troy. It was Troy. And Dominique was like, but why are you mad about something that don't have nothing to do with you? And Cameron was like, why are you mad about something that don't have nothing to do with you? And they get to going back and forth. And shouts out to my boy Jamar84. Mwah, boo. Because Jamar was up at the party. And then Jamar, we saw Jamar when they got to elevating their voices. Jamar ran out there with that drink in his hand. Jamar, what was you going to do? What was you going to do, Jamar? You had a whole drink in your hand. If you had ran out there and they was really about to tussle, what was you, what was you going to do, boo? Because <laughs> I know you wasn't going to drop that liquor. <laughs> anyway, um, basically, everybody come well, not everybody, but people come running out to try to defuse the situation, and eventually they end up, you know, Cameron and his friends end up leaving. But... I feel like they're going to turn this into a whole situation that's not a situation. Because let's be clear. I said it, and I'm going to say this, and then I'm going to be done. You can't be more mad than they are. If Dominique and Troy are okay, Cameron, you're going to have to let that go. Um, of course, they're accusing you of doing all this to have a storyline. So that's this episode. Um, I'll see y'all next week. Peace.